55. And it came to pass after this that Jacob said, I will go and see my son in Egypt, and will then come back to the land of Canaan, of which God had spoken unto Abraham, for I cannot leave the land of my birthplace. Behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Go down to Egypt with all thy household, and remain there. Fear not to go down to Egypt, for I will there make thee a great nation. And Jacob said within himself, I will go and see my son, whether the fear of his God is yet in his heart, amidst all the inhabitants of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Fear not about Joseph, for he still retained his integrity to serve me, as will seem good in thy sight. And Jacob rejoiced exceedingly concerning his son. At that time Jacob commanded his sons and household to go to Egypt according to the word of the Lord unto him. And Jacob rose up with his sons and all his household, and he went out from the land of Canaan from Beersheba with joy and gladness of heart. And they went to the land of Egypt. And it came to pass, when they came near Egypt, Jacob sent Judah before him to go to Joseph, that he might show him his situation in Egypt. And Judah did according to the word of his father. And he hastened and ran and came to Joseph, and they assigned for them a place in the land of Goshen for all his household. And Judah returned and came along the road to his father. And Joseph harnessed the chariot, and he assembled all his mighty men, and his servants, and all the officers of Egypt, in order to go and meet his father Jacob. And Joseph's mandate was proclaimed in Egypt, saying, All that do not go to meet Jacob shall die. And on the next day Joseph went forth with all Egypt, a great and mighty host, all dressed in garments of fine linen and purple, and with instruments of silver and gold, and with their instruments of war with them. And they all went to meet Jacob with all sorts of musical instruments, with drums and timbrels, strewing mirror and aloes, all along the, the road. And they all went after this fashion, and the earth shook at their shouting. And all the women of Egypt went upon the roofs of Egypt, and upon the walls to meet Jacob, and upon the head of Joseph was Pharaoh's regal crown, for Pharaoh had sent it unto him to put on at the time of his going to meet his father. And when Joseph came within fifty cubits of his father, he alighted from the chariot, and he walked toward his father, and when all the officers of Egypt and her nobles saw that Joseph had gone on foot toward his father, they also alighted and walked on foot toward Jacob. And when Jacob approached the camp of Joseph, Jacob observed the camp that was coming toward him with Joseph, and it gratified him, and Jacob was astonished at it. And Jacob said unto Judah, who is that man whom I see in the camp of Egypt dressed in kingly robes with a very red garment upon him and a royal crown upon his head, who has alighted from his chariot and is coming toward us? And Judah answered his father, saying, He is thy son Joseph the king. And Jacob rejoiced in seeing the glory of his son. And Joseph came nigh unto his father, and he bowed to his father, and all the men of the camp bowed to the ground with him before Jacob. And behold, Jacob ran and hastened to his son Joseph, and fell upon his neck and kissed him. And they wept, and Joseph also embraced his father, and kissed him, and they wept, and all the people of Egypt wept with them. And Jacob said unto Joseph, now I will die cheerfully after I have seen thy face, the thou art still living, and with glory. And the sons of Jacob and their wives and their children and their servants and all the household of Jacob wept exceedingly with Joseph, and they kissed him and wept greatly with him. And Joseph and all his people returned afterward home to Egypt, 
And Jacob and his sons and all the children of his household came with Joseph to Egypt. And Joseph placed them in the best part of Egypt, in the land of Goshen. And Joseph said unto his father and unto his brethren, I will go up and tell Pharaoh, saying, My brethren, my father's household, and all belonging to them have come unto me. And behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And Joseph did so, and took from his brethren Reuben, Issachar, Zebulun, and his brother Benjamin, and he placed them before Pharaoh. And Joseph spoke unto Pharaoh, saying, My brethren and my father's household, and all belonging to them, together with their flocks and cattle, have come unto me from the land of Canaan, to sojourn in Egypt, for the famine was sore upon them. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Place thy father and brethren in the best part of the land. Withhold not from them all that is good, and cause them to eat of the fat of the land. And Joseph answered, saying, Behold, I have stationed them in the land of Goshen, for they are shepherds. Therefore let them remain in Goshen to feed their flocks apart from the Egyptians. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, do with thy brethren all that they shall say unto thee. And the sons of Jacob bowed down to Pharaoh, and they went forth from him in peace. And Joseph afterward brought his father before Pharaoh. And Jacob came and bowed down to Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And he then went out, and Jacob and all his sons and all his household dwelt in the land of Goshen. In the second year, that is, in the hundred and thirtieth year of the life of Jacob, Joseph maintained his father and his brethren, and all his father's household, with bread according to their little ones. All the days of the famine they lacked nothing, and Joseph gave unto them the best part of the whole land, the best of Egypt had they all the days of Joseph. And Joseph also gave unto them and unto the whole of his father's household clothes and garments year by year, and the sons of Jacob remained securely in Egypt all the days of their brother. And Jacob always ate at Joseph's table. Jacob and his sons did not leave Joseph's table day or night, besides what Jacob's children consumed in their houses. And all Egypt ate bread during the days of the famine from the house of Joseph. For all the Egyptians sold all belonging to them on account of the famine. And Joseph purchased all the lands and fields of Egypt for bread on the account of Pharaoh. And Joseph supplied all Egypt with bread all the days of the famine. And Joseph collected all the silver and gold that came unto him for the corn which they brought throughout the land, and he accumulated much gold and silver, besides an immense quantity of onyx stones, bedellium, and valuable garments which they brought unto Joseph from every part of the land when their money was spent. And Joseph took all the silver and gold that came unto his, his hand, about seventy-two talents of gold and silver, and also onyx stones and bedellium in great abundance. And Joseph went and concealed them in four parts, and he concealed one part in the wilderness near the Red Sea, and one part by the river Perath, and the third and fourth part he concealed in the desert opposite to the wilderness of Persia and Medea. And he took part of the gold and silver that was left, and gave un unto all his brothers, and unto all his father's household, and unto all the women of his father's household, and the rest of he brought to the house of Pharaoh about twenty talents of gold and silver. And Joseph gave all the gold and silver that was left unto Pharaoh, and Pharaoh placed it in the treasury, and the days of the famine ceased. After that in the land, and they sowed and reaped in the whole land, and they obtained their usual quantity year by year. They lacked nothing. 
And Joseph dwelt securely in Egypt, and the whole land was under his advice. And his father and all his brethren dwelt in the land of Goshen and took possession of it. And Joseph was very aged, advanced in days, and his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, remained constantly in the house of Jacob, together with the children of the sons of Jacob, their brethren, to learn the ways of the Lord and his law. And Jacob and his sons dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the land of Goshen, and they took possession in it, and they were fruitful and multiplied in it. 56. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years, and the days of Jacob and the years of his life were a hundred and forty-seven years. At that time Jacob was attacked with the illness of which he died, and he sent and called for his son Joseph from Egypt. And Joseph his son came from Egypt, and Joseph came unto his father. And Jacob said unto Joseph and unto his sons, Behold, I die, and the God of your ancestors will visit you and bring you back to the land which the Lord swore to give you, give unto you and unto your children after you. Now therefore, when I am dead, bury me in the cave which is in Machpelah in Hebron, in the land of Canaan, near my ancestors. And Jacob made his son swear to bury him in Machpelah, in Hebron, and his son swore unto him concerning this thing. And he commanded them, saying, Serve the Lord your God, for he who delivered your fathers will also deliver you from all trouble. And Jacob said, Call all your children unto me. And all the children of Jacob's sons came and sat before him. And Jacob blessed them, and he said unto them, The Lord God of your fathers shall grant you a thousand times as much and bless you. And may he give you the blessing of your father Abraham. And all the children of Jacob's sons went forth on that day after he had blessed them. And on the next day Jacob again called for his sons, and they all assembled and came to him and sat before him. And Jacob on that day blessed his sons before his death. Each man did he bless according to his blessing. Behold, it is written in the book of the law of the Lord appertaining to Israel. And Jacob said unto Judah, I know, my son, that thou art a mighty man for thy brethren. Reign over them, and thy sons shall reign over their sons forever. Only teach thy sons the bow and all the weapons of war, in order that they may fight the battles of the brother who will rule over his enemies. And Jacob again commanded his sons on that day, saying, Behold, I shall be this day gathered unto my people, carry me up from Egypt, and bury me in the cave of Machpelah, as I have commanded you. How by take heed, I pray you, that none of your sons carry me, only yourselves, and this is the manner you shall do unto me. When you carry my body to go with it to the land of Canaan to bury me, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulon shall carry my bear at the eastern side, Reuben, Simeon, and God at the south, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin at the west, Dan, Asher, and Naphtali at the north. Let not Levi carry with you, for he and his sons will carry the ark of the covenant of the Lord with the Israelites in the camp. Neither let Joseph my son carry, for as a king so let his glory be. Howbeit Ephraim and Manasseh shall be in their stead. Thus shall you do unto me when you carry me away. Do not neglect anything of all that I command you. And it shall come to pass when you do this unto me, that the Lord will remember you favorably, favorably and your children after you forever. And you, my sons, honor each his brother and his relative, and command your children and your children's children after you to serve the Lord God of your ancestors all the days, in order that you may prolong your days in the land, you and your children and your children's children forever, when you do what is good and upright in the sight of the Lord your God, to go in all his ways. 
and thou, Joseph, my son, forgive, I pray thee, the wrongs of thy brethren, and all their misdeeds in thy injury, that they heaped upon thee. For God intended it for thine and thy children's benefit. And though my son leave not thy brethren to the inhabitants of Egypt, neither hurt their feelings, for behold, I consign them to the hand of God, and in thy hand to guard them from the Egyptians. And the sons of Jacob answered their father, saying, O our father, all that thou hast commanded us we will do. May God only be with us. And Jacob said unto his sons, So may God be with you, when you keep all his ways. Turn not from his ways, either to the right or to the left, in performing what is good and upright in his sight. For I know that many and grievous troubles will befall you in the latter days in the land. Yea, your children and children's children only serve the Lord, and he will save you from all trouble. And it shall come to pass when you shall go after God to serve him, and will teach your children after you, and your children's children to know the Lord. Then will the Lord raise up unto you and your children a servant from amongst your children. And the Lord will deliver you through his hand from all affliction and bring you out of Egypt and bring you back to the land of your fathers to inherit it securely. And Jacob ceased commanding his sons. And he drew his feet into the bed. He died and was scattered to his people. And Joseph fell upon his father and he cried out and wept over him and he kissed him. And he called out in a bitter voice, and he said, O oh, my father, my father, and his son's wives, and all his household came and fell upon Jacob. And they wept over him and cried in a very loud voice concerning Jacob. And all the sons of Jacob rose up together, and they tore their garments, and they all put sackcloth upon their loins. And they fell upon their faces, and they cast dust upon their heads toward the heavens. And the thing was told unto us not Joseph's wife. And she rose up and put on a sack, and she with all the Egyptian women with her came and mourned and wept for Jacob. And also all the people of Egypt who knew Jacob came all on that day when they heard this thing. And all Egypt wept for many days. And also from the land of Canaan did the women come unto Egypt when they heard that Jacob was dead. And they wept for him in Egypt for seventy days. And it came to pass after this that Joseph commanded the servants, the doctors, to embalm his father with myrrh and frankincense and all manner of incense and perfume. And the doctors embalmed Jacob as Joseph had commanded them. And all the people of Egypt and the elders and all the in inhabitants of the land of Goshen wept and mourned over Jacob and all his sons and the children of his household lamented and mourned over their father Jacob many days. And after the days of his weeping had passed away, at the end of seventy days, Joseph said unto Pharaoh, I will go up and bury my father in the land of Canaan as he made me swear, and then I will return. And Pharaoh sent Joseph, saying, Go up and bury thy father, as he said, and as he made thee swear. And Joseph rose up with all his brethren to go to the land of Canaan, to bury their father Jacob as he had commanded them. And Pharaoh commanded that it should be proclaimed throughout Egypt, saying, Whoever goes not up with Joseph and his brethren to the land of Canaan to bury Jacob shall die. And all Egypt heard of Pharaoh's proclamation, and they all rose up together, and all the servants of Pharaoh, and the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt went up with Joseph. And all the officers and nobles of Pharaoh went up as the servants of Joseph, and they went to bury Jacob in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Jacob carried a bier upon which he lay, according to all that their father commanded them. So did his sons unto him, and the bear was of pure gold, and he was inlaid round about with onyx stones and bedullium, and the covering of the bear was gold woven work, joined with threads, and over them were hooks of onyx stones and bedullium.
And Joseph placed upon the head of his father Jacob a large golden crown, and he put a golden scepter in his hand, and they surrounded the pair as was the custom of kings during their lives. And all the troops of Egypt went before him in this array, after all the mighty men of Pharaoh and the mighty men of Joseph, and after them the rest of the inhabitants of Egypt. And they were all girded with swords and equipped with coats of mail, and the trappings of war were upon them. And all the weepers and mourners went at a distance opposite to the bear, going and weeping and lamenting. And the rest of the people went after the bear. And Joseph and his household went together near the bear, barefooted and weeping. And the rest of Joseph's servants went around him. So each man had his ornaments upon him, and they were all armed with their weapons of war. And fifty of Jacob's servants went in front of the bear, and they strode along the road, mare and aloes, and all manner of perfume. And all the sons of Jacob that carried the bear walked upon the perfumery. And the servants of Jacob went before them, strewing the perfume along the road. And Joseph went up with a heavy camp, and they did a after this manner every day until they reached the land of Canaan. And they came to the threshing floor of Atat, which was on the other side of Jordan. And they mourned an exceeding great and heavy mourning in that place. And all the kings of Canaan heard of this thing, and they all went forth, each man from his house, thirty-one kings of Canaan. And they all came with their men to mourn and weep over Jacob, and all these kings beheld Jacob's bear, and behold Joseph's crown was upon it. And they also put their crowns upon the bear, and encircled it with crowns. And all these kings made in that place a great and heavy mourning with the sons of Jacob, and Egypt over Jacob. For all the kings of Canaan knew the valor of Jacob and his sons. And the report reached Esau, saying, Jacob died in Egypt, and his sons and all Egypt are conveying him to the land of Canaan to bury him. And Esau heard this thing, and he was dwelling in Mount Seir. And he rose up with his sons and all his people and all his household, a people exceedingly great. And they came to mourn and weep over Jacob. And it came to pass when Esau came, he mourned for his brother Jacob. And all Egypt and all Canaan again rose up and mourned a great mourning with Esau over Jacob in that place. And Joseph and his brethren brought their father Jacob from that place. And they went to Hebron to bury Jacob in the cave by his fathers. And they came unto Kiriath Arba, to the cave. And as they came, Esau stood with his sons against Joseph and his brethren as a hindrance in the cave, saying, Jacob shall not be buried therein, for it belongeth to us and to our father. And Joseph and his brethren heard the words of his south sons, and they were exceedingly wroth. And Joseph approached unto his south, saying, What is this thing which they have spoken? Surely my father Jacob bought it from thee for great riches after the death of Isaac. Now five and twenty years ago, and also all the land of Canaan, he bought from thee and from thy sons, and thy seed after thee. And Jacob bought it for his sons and his seed after him for an inheritance forever. And why speakest thou these things this day? And Esau answered, saying, Thou speakest falsely and utterest lies, for I sold not anything belonging to me in all this land, as thou sayest. Neither did my brother Jacob buy aught belonging to me in this land. And Esau spoke these things in order to deceive Joseph with his words, for Esau knew that Joseph was not present in those days, when Esau sold all belonging to him in the land of Canaan to Jacob. And Joseph said unto Esau, Surely my father inserted these things with thee in the record of purchase, and testified the record with witnesses, and behold it is with us in Egypt. And Esau answered, saying unto him, Bring the record all that thou wilt find in the record, so will we do. And Joseph called unto Naphtali his brother, 
and he said, Hasten quickly, stay not, and run, run I pray thee, to Egypt, and bring all the records, the record of the purchase, the sealed record, and the open record, and also all the first records in which all the transactions of the birthright are written, fetch thou, and thou shalt bring them unto us hither, that we may know from them all the words of Esau and his sons which they spoke this day. And Abdali hearkened to the voice of Joseph, and he hastened and ran to go down to Egypt. And Abdali was lighter on foot than any of the stags that were upon the wilderness, for he would go upon ears of corn without crushing them. And when Esau saw that Naphtali had gone to fetch the records, he and his sons increased the resistance against the cave. And Esau and all his people rose up against Joseph and his brethren to battle. And all the sons of Jacob and the people of Egypt fought with Esau and his men. And the sons of Esau and his people were smitten before the sons of Jacob. And the sons of Jacob slew of Esau's people forty men. And Jashim the son of Dan, the son of Jacob, was at that time with Jacob's sons. But he was about a hundred cubits distance from the battle of place of battle. For he remained with the children of Jacob's sons by Jacob's spear to guard it. And Jashim was dumb and deaf, still he understood the voice of consternation amongst men. And he asked, saying, Why do you not bury the dead? And what is this great consternation? And they answered him the words of Esau and his sons. And he ran to Esau in the midst of the battle, and he slew Esau with a sword. And he cut off his head, and it sprang to a distance, and Esau fell amongst the people of the battle. And when Joshem did this thing, the sons of Jacob prevailed over the sons of Esau. And the sons of Jacob buried their father Jacob by force in the cave, and the sons of Esau beheld it. And Jacob was buried in Hebron in the cave of Machpelah, which Abraham had bought from the sons of Heth for the possession of a burial place. And he was buried in very costly garments. And no king had such honor paid him as Joseph paid unto his father at his death, for he buried him with great honor like unto the burial of kings. And Joseph and his brethren made a mourning of seven days for their father. 57. And it was after this that the sons of Esau waged war with the sons of Jacob. And the sons of Esau fought with the sons of Jacob in Hebron. And Esau was still lying dead and not buried. And the battle was heavy between them. And the sons of Esau were smitten before the sons of Jacob. And the sons of Jacob slew all the sons of Esau, eighty men. And not one died of the people of the sons of Jacob. And the hand of Joseph prevailed over all the people of the sons of Esau. And he took Zippo, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, and fifty of his men captive. And he bound them with chains of iron, and gave them into the hand of his servants to bring them to Egypt. And it came to pass when the sons of Jacob had taken Zippo and his people active, captive, all those that remained were greatly afraid of their lives from the house of Esau, lest they should also be taken captive. And they all fled with Eliphaz, the son of Esau, and his people, with Esau's body, and they went on the road to Mount Seir. And they came unto Mount Seir, and they buried Esau in Seir, but they had not brought his head with them to Seir, for he was buried in that place where the battle had been in Hebron. And it came to pass, when the sons of Esau had fled from before the sons of Jacob, the sons of Jacob pursued them unto the borders of Seir. But they did not slay a single man from amongst them when they pursued them. For Esau's body, which they carried with them, excited their confusion. So they fled, and the sons of Jacob turned back from them, and came up to the place where their brethren were in Hebron. And they remained there on that day, and on the next day until they rested from the battle. And it came to pass on the third day, they assembled all the sons of Seir the Horite, and they assembled all the children of the east, a multitude of people like the sand of the sea, 
and they went and came down to Egypt to fight with Joseph and his brethren in order to deliver their brethren. And Joseph and all the sons of Jacob heard that the sons of Esau and the children of the east had come upon them to battle in order to deliver their brethren. And Joseph and his brethren and the strong men of Egypt went forth and fought in the city of Ramesses. And Joseph and his brethren dealt out a tremendous blow amongst the sons of Esau and the children of the east. And they slew them six hundred thousand men, and they slew amongst them all the mighty men of the children of Seir the Horite. There were only a few of them left, and they slew also a great many of the children of the east, and of the children of Esau, and Eliphaz the son of Esau, and the children of the east all fled before Joseph and his brethren. And Joseph and his brethren pursued them until they came unto Sukkoth, and they yet slew of them in Sukkoth thirty men, and the rest escaped, and they fled each to his city. And Joseph and his brethren and the mighty men of Egypt turned back from them with joy and cheerfulness of heart, for they had smitten all their enemies. And Zephor, the son of Eliphaz, and his men were still slaves in Egypt to the sons of Jacob, and their pains increased. And when the sons of Esau and the sons of Seir returned to their land, the sons of Seir saw that they had all fallen into the hands of the sons of Jacob. And the people of Egypt, on account of the battle of the sons of Esau, and the sons of Seir said unto the sons of Esau, Ye have sinned, and therefore you know that this camp was on your account, and not one mighty man or any adept in war remaineth. Now therefore go forth from our land, go from us to the land of Canaan, to the land of the dwelling of your fathers. Wherefore shall your children inherit the effects of our children in latter days? And the children of Esau would not listen to the children of Seir. And the children of Seir considered to make war with them. And the children of Esau sent secretly to Antias, king of Africa, the same as Denaba, saying, Send unto us some of thy men, and let them come unto us, and we will fight together with the children of Seir the Horite, for they have resolved to fight with us to drive us away from the land. And then Jesus, king of Lenhaba did so, for he was in those days friendly to the children of Esau, and Angeas sent five hundred valiant infantry to the children of Esau and eight hundred cavalry. And the children of Seir sent unto the children of the east and unto the children of Midian, saying, You have seen what the children of Esau have done to, unto us, upon whose account we are almost all destroyed in their battle with the sons of Jacob. Now therefore come unto us and assist us, and we will fight them together, and we will drive them from the land and be avenged of the cause of our brethren who died for their sakes in their battle with their brethren, the sons of Jacob. And all the children of the east <laughs> listened to the children of Seir, and they came unto them about eight hundred men with drawn swords, and the children of Esau fought with the children of Seir at a time in the wilderness of Paran. And the children of Seir prevailed then over the sons of Esau, and the children of Seir slew on that day of the children of Esau in that battle about two hundred men of the people of Antias, king of Denaba. And on the second day the children of Esau came again to fight a second time with the children of Seir, and the battle was sore upon the children of Esau the second time, and it troubled them greatly on account of the children of Seir. And when the children of Esau saw that the children of Seir were more powerful than they were, some of the children of Esau turned and assisted the children of Seir their enemies. And there fell yet of the people of the children of Esau in the second battle fifty-eight men of the people at Antias, king of Denaba. And on the third day the children of Esau heard that some of their brethren had turned from them to fight against them in the second battle. And the children of Esau mourned when they heard this thing. And they said, What shall we do unto our brethren who turned from us to assist the children of Seir, our enemies? And the children of Esau again sent to Antias, king of Denaba, saying, Send unto us again other men that with them we may fight with the children of Seir, for they have already twice been heavier than we were. 
and Antaeus again sent to the children of the Sal about six hundred valiant men, and they came to assist the children of Esau. And in ten days' time, the children of Esau again waged war with the children of Seir in the wilderness of Paran. And the battle was very severe upon the children of Seir. And the children of Esau prevailed at this time over the children of Seir. And the children of Seir were smitten before the children of Esau. And the children of Esau slew from them about two thousand men. And all the mighty men of the children of Seir died in this battle, and there only remained their young children that were left in their cities. And all Midian and the children of the east betook themselves to flight from the battle. And they left the children of Seir and fled when they saw that the battle was severe upon them. And the children of Esau pursued all the children of the east until they reached their land. And the children of Esau slew yet of them about two hundred and fifty men, and from the people of the children of Esau there fell in that battle about thirty men. But this evil came upon them through their brethren, turning from them to assist the children of Seir the whole right. And the children of Esau again heard of the evil doings of their brethren, and they again mourned on the account of this thing. And it came to pass after the battle, the children of Esau turned back and came home at Seir. And the children of Esau slew those who had remained in the land of the children of Seir. They slew also their wives and little ones. They left not a soul alive except fifty young lads and damsels, whom they suffered to live. And the children of Esau did not put them to death. And the lads became their slaves, and the damsels they took for wives. And the children of Esau dwelt in Seir, in the place of the children of Seir. And they inherited their land and took possession of it. And the children of Esau took all belonging in the land of the children of Seir, also their flocks, their bullocks, and their goods. And all belonging to the children of Seir did the children of Esau take. And the children of Esau dwelt in Seir, in the place of the children of Seir unto this day. And the children of Esau divided the land into divisions to the five sons of Esau, according to their families. And it came to pass in those days that the children of Esau resolved to crown a king over them in the land of which they became of possessed. And they said to each other, Not so, for he shall reign over us in our land, and we shall be under, under his counsel, and he shall fight our battles against our enemies. And they did so. And all the children of Esau swore, saying, That none of their brethren should ever reign over them. But a strange man who is not of their brethren, for the souls of all the children of Esau were embittered every man against his son, brother, and friend on account of the evil they sustained from their brethren when they fought with the children of Seir. Therefore the sons of Esau swore, saying from that day forward, they would not choose a king from their brethren, but one from a strange land unto this day. And there was a man there from the people of Angeas, king of Denaba. His name was Bela, the son of Beor, who was a very valiant man, beautiful and comely and wise in all wisdom, and a man of sense and counsel. And there was none of the people of Angeas like unto him. And all the children of Esau took him and anointed him, and they crowned him for a king. And they bowed down to him, and they said unto him, May the king live, may the king live. And they spread out the sheet, and they brought him upon each man earrings of gold and silver of rings or bracelets. And they made him very rich in silver and in gold, in onyx stones and bedillium, and they made him a royal throne. And they placed a regal crown upon his head, and they built a palace for him. And he dwelt therein, and he became king over all the children of Esau. And the people of Antias took their hire for their battle from the children of Esau, and they went and returned at the time to their master in Dinaba. And Bela reigned over the children of Esau thirty years, and the children of Esau dwelt in the land instead of the children of Seir, and they dwelt securely in their stead unto this day. 58. And it came to pass in the thirty-second year, 
of the Israelites going down to Egypt, that is in the 71st year of the life of Joseph. In that year died Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Magron, his son, reigned in his stead. And Pharaoh commanded Joseph before his death to be a father to his son, Magron, and that Magron should be under the care of Joseph and under his counsel. And all Egypt consented to this thing that Joseph should be king over them. For all the Egyptians loved Joseph as of heretofore. Only Magron, the son of Pharaoh, sat upon his father's throne, and he became king in those days in his father's stead. Magron was forty-one years old when he began to reign, and forty years he reigned in Egypt. And all Egypt called his name Pharaoh after the name of his father as it was their custom to do in Egypt to every king that reigned over them. And it came to pass when Pharaoh reigned in his father's stead, he placed the laws of Egypt and all the affairs of government in the hand of Joseph, as his father had commanded him. And Joseph became king over Egypt, for he superintended over all Egypt, and all Egypt was under his care and under his counsel. For all Egypt inclined to Joseph after the death of Pharaoh, and they loved him exceedingly to reign over them. But there were some people amongst them who did not like him, saying, No stranger shall reign over us. Still the whole government of Egypt devolved in those days upon Joseph. After the death of Pharaoh, he being the regulator, doing as he liked throughout the land without anyone interfering. And all Egypt was under the care of Joseph, and Joseph made war with all his surrounding enemies, and he subdued them. Also all the land and all the Philistines unto the borders of Canaan did Joseph subdue, and they were all under his power. And they gave a yearly tax unto Joseph. And Pharaoh king of Egypt sat upon his throne in his father's state, but he was under the control and counsel of Joseph, and as he was at first under the control of his father. Neither did he reign but in the land of Egypt only, under the counsel of Joseph. But Joseph reigned over the whole country at the time, from Egypt unto the great river Perath. And Joseph was successful in all his ways. And the Lord was with him, and the Lord gave Joseph additional wisdom and honor and glory and love toward him in the hearts of the Egyptians and throughout the land. And Joseph reigned over the whole country forty years. And all the countries of the Philistines at Canaan and Zidon and all the other side of Jordan brought presents unto Joseph all his days, and the whole country was in the hand of Joseph. And they brought unto him a yearly tribute as it was regulated. For Joseph had fought against all his surrounding enemies, and subdued them, and the whole country was in the hand of Joseph. And Joseph sat securely upon his throne in Egypt. And also all his brethren, the sons of Jacob, dwelt securely in the land all the days of Joseph, and they were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly in the land, and they served the Lord all their days, as their father Jacob had commanded them. And it came to pass at the end of many days and years, when the children of Esau were dwelling quietly in their land with Bela, their king, that the children of Esau were fruitful and multiplied in the land, and they resolved to go and fight with the sons of Jacob and all Egypt, and to deliver their brother Zepho, the son of Elephas, and his men, for they were yet in those days slaves to old Joseph. And the children of Esau sent unto all the children of the east, and they made peace with them, and all the children of the east came unto them to go with the children of Esau to Egypt to battle. And there came also unto them of the people of Antias, king of Dinabah, and they also sent unto the children of Ishmael, and they also came unto them. And all his people assembled and came unto Seir to assist the children of Esau in their battle. 
and this camp was very large and heavy with people, numerous as the sand of the sea, about 800,000 men, infantry and cavalry, and all these troops went down to Egypt to fight with the sons of Jacob, and they encamped by Ramesses. And Joseph went forth with his brethren with the mighty men of Egypt, about six hundred men, and they fought with them in the land of Ramesses. And the sons of Jacob at that time again fought with the children of Esau. In the fiftieth year of the sons of Jacob going down to Egypt, that is the thirtieth year of the reign of Bela over the children of Esau and Seir. And the Lord gave all the mighty men of Esau and the children of the east into the hand of Joseph and his brethren. And the people of the children of Esau and the children of the east were, were smitten before Joseph. And of the people of Esau and the children of the east that were slain, there fell before the sons of Jacob about two hundred thousand men, and their king Bela the son of Beor fell with them in the battle. And when the children of Esau saw that their king had fallen in battle and was dead, their hands became weak in the combat. And Joseph and his brethren of all Egypt were still smiting the people of the house of Esau. And all Esau's people were afraid of the sons of Jacob and fled from before them. And Joseph and his brethren and all Egypt pursued them a day's journey, and they slew yet from them about three hundred men continuing to smite them in the road, and they afterward turned back from them. And Joseph and all his brethren returned to Egypt. Not one man was missing from them, but of the Egyptians there fell twelve men. And when Joseph returned to Egypt, he ordered Zepho and his men to be additionally bound. And they bound them in irons, and they increased their grief. And all the people of the children of Esau and the children of the east returned in shame each unto his city. For all the mighty men that were with them had fallen in battle. And when the children of Esau saw that their king had died in battle, they hastened and took a man from the people of the children of the east. His name was Jubab, the son of Zorak, from the land of Botswana. And they caused him to reign over them instead of Bela, their king. And Jobab sat upon the throne of Bela as king in his stead, and Jobab reigned in Edom over all the children of Esau ten years. And the children of Esau went no more to fight with the sons of Jacob from that day forward. For the sons of Esau knew the valor of the sons of Jacob, and they were greatly afraid of them. But from that day forward the children of Esau hated the sons of Jacob. And the hatred and enmity were very strong between them all the days and to this day. And it came to pass after this, at the end of ten years, Jubab the son of Zerach from Botsra died. And the children of Esau took a man whose name was Jujam from the land of Teman. And they made him king over them instead of Jubab. And Jujam reigned in Edom over all the children of Esau for twenty years. And Joseph king of Egypt and his brethren and all the children of Esau dwelt securely in Egypt in those days, together with all the children of Joseph and his brethren, having no hindrance or evil accident, and the land of Egypt was at that time a rest from war in the days of Joseph and his brethren. 59. And these are the names of the sons of Israel who dwelt in Egypt, who had come with Jacob. All the sons of Jacob came unto Egypt, every man with his household. The children of Leah were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulon, and their sister Dinah. And the sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. And the sons of Zilpah, the handmaid of Leah, were Gad and Asher. And the sons of Bilah, the handmaid of Rachel, were Dan and Naphtali. And these were their offspring that were born unto them in the land of Canaan, before they came unto Egypt with their father Jacob. And the sons of Reban were Chanot, Palu, Jetron, and Carmi. And the sons of Simeon were Jimuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Chuchar, and Zaul, the son of the Canaanitish woman. And the children of Levi were Gershon, Kehat, and Mirari, and their sister jo Jochebed, who was born unto them in their going down to Egypt, and the sons of Judah were Er, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerat. 
And Aaron and Nun died in the land of Canaan, and the sons of Perez were Jezron and Shamul. And the sons of Issachar were Tola, Puva, Job, and Shamron. And the sons of Zebulun were Sered, Elon, and Jacleel. And the son of Dan was Joshim. And the sons of Natali were Jeshiel, Guni, Jetzer, and Shilam. And the sons of God were Sephion, Chagi, Chuni, Isbon, Ere, Arodi, and Oreli. And the children of Asher were Jimna, Jishva, Jishvi, Berea, and their sister Sirat. And the sons of Berea were Teber and Malchiel. And the sons of Je Benjamin were Bela, Becher, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Achi, Rosh, Mokbem, Chupem, and Ord. And the sons of Joseph that were born unto him in Egypt were Manasseh and Ephraim. And all the souls that went forth from the loins of Jacob were seventy souls. These are they who came with Jacob their father unto Egypt to dwell there. And Joseph and all his brethren dwelt securely in Egypt, and they ate of the best of Egypt all the days of the life of Joseph. And Joseph lived in the land of Egypt ninety-three years, and Joseph reigned over all Egypt eighty years. And when the days of Joseph drew nigh that he should die, he sent and called for his brethren and all his father's household, and they all came together and sat before him. And Joseph said unto his brethren and unto the whole of his father's household, Behold, I die, and God will surely visit you, and bring you up from this land to the land which he swore to your fathers to give unto them. And it shall be when God shall visit you to bring you up from here to the land of your fathers. Then bring up my bones with you from here. And Joseph made the sons of Israel to swear for the seed after them, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall bring up my bones with you from here. And it came to pass after this that Joseph died in that year, the seventy-first year of the Israelites going down to Egypt. And Joseph was one hundred and ten years old when he died in the land of Egypt. And all his brethren and all his servants rose up, and they embalmed Joseph as was their custom. And his brethren and all Egypt mourned over him for seventy days. And they put Joseph in a coffin filled with spices and all sorts of perfume, and they buried him by the side of the river. That is Sihor, and his sons and all his brethren, and the whole of his father's household, made a seven days mourning for him. And it came to pass after the death of Joseph, all the Egyptians began in those days to rule over the children of Israel. And Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who reigned in his father's stead, took all the laws of Egypt and conducted the whole government of Egypt under his counsel, and he reigned securely over his people. 60. And when the year came round, uh, being the 72nd year, from the Israelites going down to Egypt after the death of Joseph, Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, fled from Egypt, he and his men, and they went away. And he came to Africa, which is Dinaba, and to Antias, king of Africa, and Antias received them with great honor. And he made Zepho the captain of his host. And Zepho found favor in the sight of Angeas and in the sight of his people. And Zepho was captain of the host of Angeas, king of Africa, for many days. And Zepho enticed Angeas, king of Africa, to collect all his army to go and fight with the Egyptians and with the sons of Jacob, and to avenge of them the cause of his brethren. But Angeas would not listen to Zepho. To do this thing, for Angeas knew the strength of the sons of Jacob, and what they had done to his army in their warfare with the children of Esau. And Zepho was in those days very great in the sight of Angeas, and in the sight of all his people. And he continually enticed them to make war against Egypt, but they would not. And it came to pass in those days, there was in the land of Chetem a man in the city of Bozumna, whose name was Ozo, and he became degenerately defied by the children of Chittim. And the man died and had no son, only one daughter whose name was Janya. 
and the damsel was exceedingly beautiful, comely and intelligent. There was none seen like unto her for beauty and wisdom throughout the land. And the people of Angeas, king of Africa, saw her, and they came and praised her unto him. And Angeas sent to the children of Jitam, and he requested to take her unto himself for wife. And the people of Jitam consented to give her unto him for wife. And when the messengers of Angeas were going forth from the land of Jitam to take their journey, Behold, the messengers of Turnus, king of Bebentu, came unto Chitem, for Turnus, king of Bebentu, also sent his messengers to request Janya for him, to take unto himself for a wife, for all his men had also praised her to him. Therefore he sent all his servants unto her. And the servants of Turnus came to Chitem, and they asked for Janya to be taken unto Turnus, their king, for a wife. And the people of Chittim said unto them, We cannot give her, because Angeas, king of Africa, desired her to take her unto him for wife before you came, and that we should give her unto him. And now therefore, therefore we cannot do this thing to deprive Angeas of the damsel in order to give her unto Turnus. For we are greatly afraid of Angeas, lest he come in battle against us and destroy us. And Turnus, your master, will not be able to deliver us from his hand. And when the messengers of Turnus heard all the words of the children of Jitem, they turned back to their master and told him all the words of the children of Jitem. And the children of Jitem sent a memorial to Angia, saying, Behold, Turnus has sent for Jania to take her unto him for a wife. And thus have we answered him, and we heard that he has collected his whole army to go to war against thee, and he intends to pass by the road of Sardunia to fight against thy brother Lucas, and after that he will come to fight against thee. And Angus heard the words of the children of Jitim, which they sent to him in the record, and his anger was kindled, and he rose up and assembled his whole army and came through the islands of the sea, the road to Sardonia, unto his brother Lucas, king of Sardonia. And Niblus, the son of Lucas, heard that his uncle Angeas was coming, and he went out to meet him with a heavy army. And he kissed him and embraced him, and Niblus said unto Angeas, When thou askest my father after his welfare, when I shall go with thee to fight with Turnus, ask of him to make me captain of his host. And Angeas did so. And he came unto his brother, and his brother came to meet him, and he asked him after his welfare. And Angeas asked his brother Lucas after his welfare, and to make his son Niblus captain of his host, and Lucas did so. And Angeas and his brother Lucas rose up, and they went toward Turnus to battle. And there was with them a great army and a heavy people. And he came in ships, and they came into the province of Ashtorash. And behold, Turnus came toward them. For he went forth to Sardunia, and intended to destroy it, and afterward to pass on from there to Anges to fight with him. And Anges and Lucas' brother met Turnus in the valley of Canopia, and the battle was strong and mighty between them in that place, and the battle was severe upon Lucas, king of Sardonia, and all his army fell. And Niblus his son fell also in that battle, and his uncle Anchias commanded his servants that they made a golden coffin for Niblus, and they put him into it. And Anchias again waged war, battle toward Turnus, and Anchias was stronger than he. And he slew him, and he smote all his people with the edge of the sword. And Anchias avenged the cause of Niblus his brother's son, and the cause of the army of his brother Locus. And when Turnus died, the hands of those that survived the battle became weak, and they fled from before Anchias and Locus his brother. And Anchias and his brother Locus pursued them unto the high road which is between Alpano and Roma, and they slew the whole army of Turnus with the edge of the sword. And Lucas, king of Sardonia, commanded his servants that they should make a coffin of brass, and that they should place therein the body of his son Niblus, and they buried him in that place. 
And they built upon it a high tower there upon the high road, and they called its name after the name of Niblos unto this day. And they also buried Turnus, king of Bibinto, there in that place with Niblos. And behold, upon the high road between Alphano and Roma, the grave of Niblos is on one side, and the grave of Turnus on the other, and a pavement between them unto this day. And when Niblos was buried, Lucas his father returned his army to his land Sardonia, and Angeas his brother, king of Africa, went with his people unto the city of Bibento, that is the city of Turnus. And the inhabitants of Bibento heard of his fame, and they were greatly afraid of him. And they went forth to meet with him with weeping and supplication. And the inhabitants of Bibinto entreated of Angeas not to slay them nor to destroy their city. And he did so, for Bibinto was in those days reckoned as one of the cities of the children of Chittim. Therefore he did not destroy it. But from that day forward, the troops of the king of Africa would go to Chittim to spoil and plunder it. And whenever they went, Zeppo, the captain of the host of Angeas, would go with them. And it was after this that Angeas turned with his army, and they came to the city of Puzimna. And Angeas took thence Janya, the daughter of Uzu, for a wife, and brought her unto his city, unto Africa. 61. And it came to pass at that time, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, commanded all his people to make for him a strong palace in Egypt. And he also commanded the sons of Jacob to assist the Egyptians in the building. And the Egyptians made a beautiful and elegant palace for a royal habitation, and he dwelt therein, and he renewed his government, and he reigned securely. And Zebulun, the son of Jacob, died in that year. That is the seventy-second year of the going down of the Israelites to Egypt. And Zebulun died a hundred and fourteen years old, and was put into a coffin and given to the hands of his children. And in the seventy-fifth year died his brother Simeon. He was a hundred and twenty years old at his death, and he was also put into a coffin and given to the hands of his children. And Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, captain of the host of Angeas, king of Danaba, was still daily enticing Angeas to prepare for battle to fight with the sons of Jacob in Egypt. And Angeas was unwilling to do this thing, for his servants had related to him all the might of the sons of Jacob, what they had done unto them in their battle with the children of Esau. And Zepho was in those days daily enticing Angeas to fight with the sons of Jacob in those days. And after some time, Angeas hearkened to the words of Zepho and consented to him to fight with the sons of Jacob in Egypt. And Angeas got all his people in order, a people numerous as the sand which is upon the seashore. And he formed his resolution to go to Egypt to battle. And amongst the servants of Angeas was a yell. Youth fifteen years old, Balaam, the son of Beor, was his name, and the youth was very wise and understood the art of witchcraft. And Angeas said unto Balaam, Conjure for us, I pray thee, with the witchcraft, that we may know who will prevail in this battle to which we are now proceeding. And Balaam ordered that they should bring him wax, and he made thereof the likeness of chariots and horsemen, representing the army of Angeas and the army of Egypt. And he put them in the cunningly prepared waters that he had for that purpose, and he took it in his hand, the boughs of myrtle trees, and he exercised his cunning. And he joined them over the water, and there appeared unto him the water, to resembling the images of the host of Angeas falling before the resembling images of the Egyptians and the sons of Jacob. And Balaam told this thing to Angeas, and Angeas despaired, and did not arm himself to go down to Egypt to battle, and he remained in his city. And when Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, saw that Angeas despaired of going forth to battle with the Egyptians, Zepho fled from Angeas from Africa, and he went and came unto Chittim. And all the ba- uh, and all the people of Chittim received him with great honor, and they hired him to fight their battles all the days. And Zepho became exceedingly rich in those days, and the troops of the king of Africa still spread themselves in those days. 
and the children of Chittim assembled and went to Mount Coptisia on account of the troops of Angeas, king of Africa, who were advancing upon them. And it was one day that Zeppo lost a young heifer, and he went to seek it, and he heard it lowing around about the mountain. And Zeppo went, and he saw, and behold, there was a large cave at the bottom of the mountain, and there was a great stone there at the entrance of the cave. And Zeppo split the stone, and he came into the cave, and he looked, and behold, a large animal was devouring the ox. From the middle upward it resembled a man, and from the middle downward it resembled an animal. And Zepho rose up against the animal and slew it with his swords. And the inhabitants of Shittim heard of this thing, and they rejoiced exceedingly. And they said, What shall we do unto this man who has slain this animal that devoured our cattle? And they all assembled to consecrate one day in the year to him, and they called the name thereof Zepho after his name. And they brought unto him drink offerings year after year on that day, and they brought unto him gifts. At that time Jania, the daughter of the wife of King Angus, became ill, and her illness was heavily felt by Angus and his officers. And Angus said unto his wise men, what shall I do to Janya, and how shall I heal her from her illness? And his wise men said unto him, Because the air of her country is not like the air of the land of Judim, and her water is not like their water, therefore from this has the queen become ill. For through the change of air and water she became ill, and also because in her country she drank only the water which came from Purma, which her ancestors had brought up with bridges. And Angus commanded his servants, and they brought to him in vessels of the waters of Purma, belonging to Chittim, and they weighed those waters with all the waters of the land of Africa. And they found those waters lighter than the waters of Africa. And Angus saw this thing, and he commanded all his officers to assemble the hewers of stone in thousands and tens of thousands, and they hewed stone without number. And the builders came, and they built an exceedingly strong bridge, and they conveyed the spring of water from the land of Jutim unto Africa. And those waters were for Jania the queen, and for all her concerns, to drink from the and to bake, wash and bathe therewith, and also to water therewith all seed from which food can be obtained, and all fruit of the ground. And the king commanded that they should bring of the soil of Chittim in large ships, and they also brought stones to build therewith. And the builders built palaces for Jania the queen, and the queen became healed of her illness. And at that revolution of the year, the troops of Africa continued coming to the land of Chittim to plunder as usual. And Zepho, son of Eliphaz, heard the report, and he gave orders concerning them. And he fought with them, and they fled before him, and delivered the land of Chittim from them. And the children of Chittim saw the valor of Zepho, and the children of Chittim resolved, and they made Zepho king over them. And he became king over them, and whilst he reigned, they went to subdue the children of Tubal and all the surrounding islands. And their king Zippo went at their head, and they made war with Tubal and the islands, and they subdued them. And when they returned from the battle, they renewed their, his government for him, and they built for him a very large palace for his royal habitation and seat, and they made a large throne for him. And Zepho reigned over the whole land of Chittim, and over the land of Italia fifty years.